my man. Good to catch up with you as always. As always. Yeah. How's everything flowing? You're moving soon. Um, I want to believe I am. <laughs> 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 you can never know here in the in the holy land in the holy land which is full of restrictions right now yeah uh, including your mailing service so. right love gotta love that mailing service my mm. my passport whoever is flying with my passport right now if you hear that shout outs to you shout outs to dhl um they're not sponsoring this episode mm. and shout outs to all of you i wouldn't mind a referral you know, an affiliate arrangement with DHL. I use them. I use them quite a bit this year. So they do not talk any any um, any English in the German in the in the German DHL. So if you want to communicate them, you got to have a translator. That's what I learned in the past week. Yeah, it's uh, similar here in the Netherlands. So it's uh it's always fun when you get a massive vat bill and they can't really explain to you where it came from <laughs> so right, right. you're like yeah it's just 50 percent of the purchase price and you're yeah. like okay that makes no sense considering yeah. vat is 20 so mm. anyway rocking along rocking along we've uh we've been we've been jamming quite a lot in the past two days Mm -hmm. and you've been jamming quite a lot in this last quarter what's what's your jam been like in the last quarter uh a great way to get started and how long do we have you know we'll try and keep this one a little bit shorter than a typical episode but um it, it's funny because we were talking a little bit about greg McEwen and that whole book essentialism and for me and i probably said this the quarter before but like just trying to boil things down to what is essential has been this amazing, elaborate, difficult process for, for a number of reasons. Like I've always been a yes person. I've always been focused on, you know, trying to deliver the best, et cetera. And those two actually don't mix well together. So when I'm looking at how to improve the quality of the work that I deliver in the world and just being able to actually move, um, move the needle on health, which is sort of what I'm focused on. Um, you know, boiling things down to what is essential every day is very, very, uh, has become just sort of the tantamount thing. Like, okay, what is the number one priority? It's what I ask myself every morning. And for me, that's predominantly thinking around strategy for, um, smarter, not harder, which is the parent company of transcriptions, right? And so, you know, trying to make sure that everything else, uh, with the exception of this podcast, really, and my clients is, is sort of pushed, at, at, or at least m my input is minimized to a certain extent. So it's been... <laughs> A hell of a quarter, man. You know, spending two weeks in Spain, learning a whole new sport, uh, just experimenting with a whole, you know, a lot of stuff in the research and development side of things. And yeah, things have been beautiful, but I'm not moving to Bali anytime soon, unlike somebody I know. So, um, looks like so am I, my friend. <laughs> but <laughs> shout, shout outs to DHL again. This, uh, this episode is not sponsored anyway. Uh, <laughs> This episode um, is sponsored by FedEx. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, it should be. Um, what's what's that new sport you were you were talking about? We were yeah. talking about. Yeah. So we, you and I were. You know, what's funny is like you're you're in Israel right now, right? And um, I spent two weeks in Mallorca, and for a long time have been investigating this whole world of free diving. Maybe initially it was just sort of okay it's very interesting to see people hold their breath and for a while i was very interested in just the breath technique of apnea breathing okay. which is kind of the breathe up that leads to going underwater uh particularly in free diving and so when we went down to mallorca for two weeks i made sure that we had time to go free diving and one of the places that we were staying in I think it's i don't know if it's palenza or whatever the name was but um 
hired an instructor because I didn't want to die. And when free diving, I got to say, I'm a person who has a history uh, of competitive sports and competitive careers. And I, I, up until this point, have largely driven my life on competition and sort of being number one on the scoreboard. Free diving was very interesting. And I'm curious as to your experience with it as well, because when I tried to be the number one on the scoreboard, meaning go down the deepest and hold my breath for the longest was when I nearly burst my left eardrum, but free diving itself, when you follow the breath work, go down slower, equalize properly, make sure that you're relaxed and you're not staring at the bottom of the ocean. You can actually go quite deep and it is quite a meditative process. So in some ways I've, I've fallen in love with this thing because we're all in this journey to calm our mind, which is kind of a myth in itself. Uh, but it's, it's such a peaceful sport in the sense that you have to be focused on what you're doing. It's the only thing that you're doing and everything that you're doing in the lead up to the dive is meant to relax you, meant to slow your heart rate, meant to be able to store up oxygen for that dive. So, you know, I, we went for two days and, you know, we we're only talking like on the second day depths of 30 meters, but hell, I love this shit. It's just so much fun. And I know you've been doing a little bit of it yourself. 30 meters deep is a lot. Just so you know, for two days, yeah, um, well, I, I have no perspective here, right? Other than if you Google world record in free diving, it's probably more like 150 plus. So I'm just well, like, okay. yeah, but that comes back to, to the competitive yeah. S of it. Uh, Absolutely. Which is again, like, I don't know if you, if you, I, if I, I look at a new sport, I don't look to, to break the world record. I just try to become a better me, but yeah. Uh, with that said, I feel like the lead up to a free dive is kind of, it really represents to me, it, it can be metaphorically like your day, you know, yeah. if you're not breathing into your day, if you're not ready for your day or for your week or for whatever that comes, you're going to be in chaos. Yeah. And that's what, what, that's what it feels like when you don't have enough air in your lungs and you're starting to get anxiety inside the water yep first of all it's dangerous yep. so you got to calm down but second secondly it's just it's just unsuccessful yeah so, so you start getting convulsions in your diaphragm way too right early. right and it's not it's not only that it's the mind it's not fun anymore it's just that and yeah. and the fact is i feel like when we do sports, when we work out, when we expose ourselves to the sun, when we do whatever we do, it's hard. again, it's easier said than done. But you know, you gotta you, you gotta be so present. And and when you when you free dive, it's literally your life on the line. Because yeah, if you you get down to thirty meters and you you start panicking, you are definitely screwed. Like you're yeah. not and. Yeah, and it's and when it's a life and death situation like that, then you kind of have to stay grounded in in the moment. Even if you feel like you don't have any more breath, you gotta uh, push forward a little bit more mm -hmm. and push yourself a little bit more. So that's yeah. what it's like for me. Free diving is the second you let go. There's such a sense of peace and flow. Yeah, that cannot I. I could not find it in anything else um this this week we had um I, I told you this story but me and a friend were just going um going into into the depth like not not very deep but going as far as we could kind of one would go the farthest the farthest they can and they would be like the you know they would be the the mark for the other one for mm -hmm. the other person to go we started at the same spot and then my friend went something like 15, 20 meters uh, mm -hmm. uh, to, from me. And I just went below and I felt this insane sense of flow in which yeah. I just 
past her and I just kept on going and kept on going and kept on going. And it was just, it felt so transcendent. I, I came out of the water and I was like, what is this? This is yeah, great. It's incredible, right? So, uh, and if you look at just a, a good free diver or even the couple of what I would call quote unquote good dives that I had, um, it almost seems effortless, right? And so you go into the water with such a state of relaxation, your heart rate's really, really low and either you're pulling yourself down or you're doing the constant kick down yeah. or whatever technique you're using. And you get to this point where you have like the negative buoyancy and it's just a beautiful thing to watch. And it's even more beautiful to experience. Like you have mm -hmm. a, if you have a technically sound dive, you're like pretty relaxed when you get down there and you're like, holy shit, I'm down at 30 meters, which is 98 feet. Yeah. And you're just sitting there and you're like, ah, I could probably hold my breath here for another minute. Now, of course, on that particular dive, I smacked my head on the fucking weight, but like <laughs> it was, uh, yeah. So the line has a weight at the end of it. And I just happened to turn around and knock my, I thought I, I hit myself hard enough to start bleeding. So I went up, but it was, um, you know, it, anyways, so free diving is such a good experience. I want to, let, let's talk about routines because this is funny. Like, when you mentioned free diving is sort of the setup of your day and just kind of the idea that if you don't plan, et cetera, you're, you're going to fail and not only plan, just like start yourself. Yeah. And, and there is a lot of, of merit to that in terms of uh, starting yourself with starting and finishing with quality. Right. Right. Um, Billy Kidd, who is a guy who I've actually had an experience of skiing with. He's an Olympic skier, and my parents used to take us to Steamboat Springs, Colorado growing up, and we um, had a chance to ski with him once or twice. And he was always obsessed with like the last three turns, which are the ones that people just fuck around with, right? They just kind of don't really care, but he was always obsessed with the last three turns because you end with quality. Anyways, uh, let's get back to morning routines. So one of the things that I've been experimenting with with morning routines this year, kind of past couple of weeks even, was the idea of putzing. And this, look, I stole it right out of Jeff Bezos's playbook. And he, he is famous for saying that he doesn't start anything before 10 a.m. And he loves the experience of putzing and he uses the time with his kids and, you know, kind of reads things, but he doesn't have a really structured um, morning in, mm -hmm. in that sense. And so what I've been playing around with lately is this, not just putzing, because uh, I wouldn't necessarily label it that, but it's, okay, I have a handful of things that I want to accomplish before 10 and ideally 11 a.m but mm. if you look at my calendar i almost never schedule anything by the way roy if you ever try to schedule something before 10 a.m uh amsterdam time it's just not gonna work uh but like i just don't schedule anything before 10 a.m now that part i did steal from bezos but what am i doing in that time uh, for me it's a time to to learn right so if you look at energy of activation, learning energy of activation being like how much energy, how much physical exertion does it take you to do something? Uh, learning something new for most people is among the highest, right? In terms of it, it, it's actually taxing. It's mentally taxing to learn right. new things. And so for me, I try to stack all of the stuff that I'm trying to learn in a particular day in that sort of pre 10 a.m. Mm -hmm. slot. Yeah. Now that right now looks a lot like a combinations of game theory and esoteric probability and statistics, but it's, it's a good time for me because I'll settle in with my coffee. I haven't really eaten anything yet. My brain is on fire. And I just really get to, to rip through a lot of, a lot of really good quality material. Mm -hmm. And the idea is to do it without interruption. Now I'm trying to balance this and I'll, I'll admit where I struggle. I'm trying to balance this with the fact that 
the team that I predominantly work with is in California. And so the times that we get to talk are in the morning and the night. And so where I'm now learning is that in the morning, I'll get the download and then kind of prioritize sort of what the rest of the day looks like past 10 a.m. But I won't necessarily begin those things until after 10 a.m., sometimes even afternoon, because I have the luxury of when the team's asleep, I have a lot of time to myself to work on these things. Right. So in that pre-10 a.m. slot, I've more or less built in sort of, the, built in, that's a great word, built this like things I need to accomplish in terms of, you know, learning something new, uh, a little bit of exercise, meditation, getting out in nature if the weather isn't shit here in Amsterdam, which mm -hmm. lately it is. Um, and, you know, really just taking that time for me and mm -hmm. making sure that I stay offline. Mm -hmm. And so I found, I've actually found freedom in less structure. Believe it or not, that is actually less structure for me. You know, it's just sort of a mishmash of stuff I need to accomplish in the morning yeah. rather than, you know, I wake up in the first 15 minutes I do X, the next 15 mm -hmm. minutes I do Y. And then, the, you know, pretty soon I'm making coffee and I put 20 mm -hmm. grams of coffee in this. So it's been, that's been freeing in a way because I, and I would encourage people to play with that because mm -hmm. the idea of just sort of having some things to do, but in no particular order and just kind of going with the flow, it, it, it appears to work well with me. Mm. There's a lot, a lot to be said about it. in in my opinion, there, there is even, even in, in 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 a diet perspective uh i always hear the f uh people saying people that i really admire and respect saying always switch it up you mm -hmm. know uh so don't have the the exact same meal every morning because you want to train your system to kind of adapt and adjust and you know and i feel like the the that morning phase is is that place where you can play with it and kind of internalize and play with structure and not have that uh, uh, set uh, these set things. I feel like there should be non non negotiables that have to get in there. Like for you, you know, it's meditation. I know you read in the morning as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and but I feel like it all it all comes down to what you feel, you know, and if you're not feeling like you can dive into 40 meters now, so you'll stop in 30 and look yeah. up and, and just chill there, you know, and that's the whole thing with, and I feel like you can, you can train yourself to do that when you eat, you mm -hmm. know, even when you're in the thick of your day and you're in that crazy, like do to do mode and you have a meal in the middle of that, and you find yourself eating very fast just like yeah. saying wait am i satisfied do i feel do i feel good do i need and do i need this this much to eat right now and all this kind of stuff that's what it brought up um that's what it brought up for me when, when you were saying all these things um, yeah absolutely and were... look we talked about this at length with josh right and i know you and josh have had a chance to connect um, and so Josh is a big fan of present moment awareness, right? And no, and I think the key takeaway actually with, with free diving, with, um, morning routines and look guys, I'm still working on this. Uh, you know, the idea of bringing awareness to those moments and just sitting, like sitting and doing one thing at a time <laughs> as a person who is a who used to brag about being a really good multitasker, it is the hardest damn thing in the world to sit and do one thing at a time, but doing one meditation and not necessarily right. trying to stack a lot of stuff doing, you know, studying one subject at one point yeah. in the morning, you know, when I eat, putting things away, focusing on eating and actually mm -hmm. taking a break from work, it helps me bring, I mean, talk about the ultimate sort of like weight loss cure, if you will. Yeah. Um, not that that is to be construed as medical advice, but, you know, just bringing awareness to your chewing 
may actually help you experience leptin and feeling full. Right. Yeah. And it really, and there was another thing that you brought up about working remotely and having that um, crunch time uh, yeah. in the middle. And that really brought up some things as a music producer, you know, and as an audio producer, producer, when I'm not sure that I'm uh, doing something well enough or I don't see something, um, I usually put it aside for mm -hmm. a few hours or a day. And then the next day, I always approach it back with way more clarity because, you know, you've you've had it cook in your brain and then if you don't let it if you don't let it rest it can't it can't soak the the it can't soak the um, the taste you know yeah and, one and you may, it, it allows yeah. you to just um, come back and so, look at it another way right 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 so uh one second my connection is a bit weird i'm just going to open a door here i'll be back in a second i i can hear you though so let's let's expand upon that, right? So um, when we're talking about what Roy just mentioned, which is producing music and not really unsure, or you're unsure of how it's going to land or finish or anything like that, uh, it's something that everybody experiences across really any profession. You're not sure how that financial right. model is going to end up. You're not sure how. Uh, the speech is going to end up and, you know, taking a break from it and you kind of look at a lot of these creative people and a lot of, you, you try and glean insights from it. And I'm fortunate enough that I live with a creative and, mm -hmm. you know, the idea of taking breaks and just coming back to it with a fresh set of eyes, getting in a night's sleep, uh, iterating on it is, is something that I've brought definitely into my life, at least within the past couple of years, but more and more recently is, okay, uh, I'm a big believer in iterating in threes, or at least this is has sort of quelled my perfectionism, if you will. So the first thing that you do is you, get, you kind of get it done to finish it. The next thing you do is you make it a little bit better. And then the third thing you do is you perfect it, right? And so in each iteration, it gets gradually better and better. But I'm not yeah. doing those iterations back to back. And as an entrepreneur, like being a fucking perfectionist is just a way to stress yourself the fuck out. Right. So grueling. Uh, yeah. And so David Hannemeyer Hansen, who think he wrote Ruby on Rails code or created it, uh, has an interesting personality, but I, again, am a, a great borrower of other people's ideas. And one of the things that he said was that iterate in threes process. And that's been, allowed me to sort of disconnect with the, this needs to be perfect the first time I do it mentality that I've had my entire life. Iteration freeze process, he said? So it's a, it's a three iteration process. Oh, oh three iterations. What I mean there is first thing you do is you just get it done. And this right. has worked really well when I do sit down to write, like, right. Right. It may be garbage. That's okay. Mm. Um, but you get it out there done and then you come back to it with a fresh set of eyes and editing is always more fun than writing itself, or at least for me. Um, and then you edit it and that's sort of your version two. And then version three is right. the one that you actually perfect. Yeah. I can highly resonate with that. Again, it's uh, making, uh, making art and making music, especially, you can be so immersed in the process. And then you go ahead and let it go. And in the evening, you listen to it and you say, oh, that is crap, you know, mm -hmm. and just let it go. And, it, and it's okay. And that's, that's the beauty of it. And one thing I want to touch is play. Yeah. Uh, I feel like uh, in these times, especially it's, it's, we all get way more, we are prone to get way more serious about things. You know, the world yeah. is in a crazy pandemic and wh whatnot. So how do you incorporate play? Man, uh, such a good question. Cause the idea of play <laughs> to me before was like, 
what the fuck like i'm not second grade anymore like play who does play right. um but it, it is so important and you know daryl edwards who's been on the show is a big advocate of the idea of playing uh he does it predominantly through movement i, I try to structure it in various aspects of my life so playing with learning meaning yeah. i'm gonna read a book that i just want to read for the sake of reading uh right now that tends to move into sort of like the the ancient texts things like the vedas etc which are very very difficult to read but it's just kind of fun for me to read books that are thousands of years old um in movement is where i've found most of my play as well because if you think about this whole world that we live in and i'm just going to extrapolate sort of the scene around me yeah it, for people right like we're working from home. My fiance and I live in a, a reasonably small apartment in Amsterdam. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the weather is iffy at best. And so getting outside all the time is a little bit difficult. Um, you have the potential in, as an entrepreneur, uh, but also just anybody right now has the potential to overload themselves with meetings, to overload themselves with uh, deliverables and to just work all the time. Uh, right. There's no real separation between right. this whole work and life anymore. In fact, mm. that whole wall just got fucking obliterated uh, mm. by, by COVID. And so rather than having work-life balance, we have work-life integration. And one of the ways that I ensure that I'm not going to go nuts or uh, have an oxytocin deficiency over the course of this this pandemic is by incorporating that element of play i mean i mean may not have labeled it that way but um it definitely is and so my workouts although they're physically demanding are all just sort of or at least a few times a week construct around mm. the idea of here i've got all of these tools around me let's right. construct something fun let's just go out and throw a sandbag around this morning mm. i took and I guess some people wouldn't call this fun. This morning, I took a 50 kilo sandbag and I just went for a walk and I was carrying a 50 kilo sandbag and I just kind of walked around the block. People look at you like you're freaking nuts, but like that stuff is fun for me. And so incorporating fun or play using a different word in different aspects of my life has been just so, so useful. I mean, you've, you've seen me at my most stressed. You've seen me at my most relaxed. I'm probably near as relaxed as I've ever been. And it's predominantly due to recognizing the value, the value of uh, working smarter, not harder to steal the company's name that I actually work for. So. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. So, so again, like so many things to unpack here. So first of all, sandbag, do you carry it on your front side or, or on your back? How do you carry it? Yeah, sure. So uh, I am a big user of multiple modalities of exercise. Ever since I've left CrossFit, um, one of the things that I valued from that experience was the idea of being you know, a generalist in fitness. So doing whether it's, you know, using the Carol bike here, using the B strong bands, X3 bar, all of those things. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, or just, you know, having fun with the toys that I have. One of the things that I have here, because gyms closed down, I was not able to buy a, a barbell in time. All of the barbells in the Netherlands apparently show, sold <laughs> out when, when I went to buy them. And so I was kind of looking for a way to just lift weights because buying sets and sets of dumbbells wasn't available barbell wasn't available and like kettlebells were in limit limited quantity but i could find sandbags and so i got some sandbags and you can do a lot of functional training with sandbags in fact julian pinot who eventually will come on this podcast is a, a huge advocate of sandbags mm -hmm. And so what am I doing with those? Those are sometimes sandbag walks, they're presses or whatever. And so when I'm walking with it, it's actually like a bear hug, right? So if you can yep. picture holding something that's 50 kilos out in front of you and just hugging it, right. and going for a walk. Um, if you've ever seen the strongest man competition. Yeah, something like that, right? And so if you think of, 
actually sandbags are a perfect example of strongman exercise. And if you look at the, the one modality of exercise that I probably have not been exposed to in my life was strongman. And so in a way, COVID, this whole lockdown experience has been um, very beneficial to me in terms of experience, getting to play around with strongman exercise. I just hope um, that DHL aren't hearing this and just walking with my, with my passport like a sandbag. Um, <laughs> anyway, it, it walking from Berlin all shout, the way to, yeah, to Israel. At, shout yeah, outs to DHL. Shout outs to DHL, sponsored by FedEx. <laughs> <laughs> um, totally. So I love that. And I can really take that and say that I've been, I've been uh, blessed with a backyard here. Yeah. At Oaks's place. And the way that I play, I know that you didn't ask, but I don't care. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the, way, the way I approach my play, thank you for asking, is um, actually there's a cat, um, a cat that we took from the street and, uh -huh. and she's just hanging around all the time. She's in my backyard and I wake up and I usually do my breathing and what, what not, but then I go out. And okay, if what type of breathing, man? You're on you're on a oh, show about health. Wim Hof. Okay, cool. Wim Hof, three rounds. Um, then I might crank in a meditation. Depends on how I feel. I have a little um, notebook in which I scribbled some some notes that I wanna of things that I wanna accomplish. So I yeah. read it out loud. Um, sometimes, sometimes not. It just really depends how I feel and what my intention is. And then I get out and I move and I do all these animal walks and I do all these bridges and all these just like letting my body know that that it's it's time to play. It's time for the day. It's time to, to, to stretch and feel where I'm at. Yeah. Um, and sometimes when the cat comes, she's she's um, she's all she's really uh, she comes close and then we we kind of play a little bit and I pet her and we're, we're we're very dynamic with each other so I feel like incorporating that in my days was very very instrumental and also she keeps you know it keeps me company and it's really yeah you get that boost of oxytocin man right 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 uh, and she gets that boost of getting pet so yeah. I don't know what, what it's like for her I don't know what what she's saying to the interviewer who's interviewing her right now but yeah. um <laughs> but yeah incorporating that you know and it really I feel like it, it it creates effortlessness in a lot of things to come yeah. after that it's just like um, meditating before getting into surf for me is it's like day and night. If I go in with a meditation before and like really mindful stretches before I enter the surf, my surfing looks different completely and feels and it different. Helps you, it helps you kind of trend, not transcend, um, accelerate. Transcend. The yeah. Transcend. Accelerate the, or accelerate the flow state too, right? Because yeah, but it, yeah. That's awesome, man. Definitely definitely it's yeah it's it is everything like the the way you prepare you prepare yourself for that surf is everything so it's same with with uh, uh free diving it's same with with being a professional at what you do it's just mm -hmm. being able to 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 deliver on a day-to-day -day basis yeah. always requires you to to do new things and and the thing that you were saying about learning new things i think that we need to hammer that in in I think that we need to hammer that a bit deeper because that's so important, you know, to always be learning. Uh, there are researches. I'm not, I'm not going to specify and you can, everybody who's listened can look, but when you learn your, I think it's white matter that just grows in your yeah. brain and, yeah. and, and then it enables you to be that. Yeah, exactly. And, and look, uh, you've probably seen it. Um, if you haven't, just, you're going to probably want to watch this this weekend, but like uh, Shawshank Redemption, right? Get busy oh, yeah. living or get busy dying. Uh, mm -hmm. You can alter those world words to be like, get busy learning or get busy dying. And, uh, you know, depending on who you talk to, where it, unless you're kind of a, 
a holder of the flat world hypothesis, we're in this very innovative time, right? And so the idea of sitting around stagnant and not learning something equates to death. And so if dv over dt is your, your slope in terms of innovation, um, right now, innovation is accelerating. So that derivative is accelerating. And in order to just keep up, people like you and I, we just need to be consuming much more information to stay at the top of our games. Uh, yes. And so that, I would be curious, Roy, actually, how, how are you viewing that? Like, how are you sourcing your information and allocating time in order to learn? So that's my morning. Like, uh, right now I'm learning about green investing. Cause oh, I want to, that's it. That's been, yeah. in my wheelhouse. We can chat about that another time. Oh yeah. Uh, is it ESG? I just learned today. Um, mm. but it's just, I've been, I've been starting to invest in the stock market lately and I've been very interested in what, you know, I, I want to invest, but I don't want my investments to be all in, in energy companies. It doesn't yeah, make any sense. It doesn't, it doesn't al align with my values. Also after watching the documentary about Dave Edinburgh and, yeah. and kiss the ground and all these things that, yeah. yeah. And, and the documentary about Greenpeace is amazing. By the yeah. way, we're going to talk about Netflix. I want you to tell me your, your favorites lately. Okay. But, um, but there are really, really powerful documentaries right now that really made me want to uh, live my life a bit different, a bit differently. And, you know, uh, not hurt the ocean and be way more sustainable about myself. So sorry, I went on a tangent there, but my mornings are always, um, there's a part in my morning in which I'll grab a cup of coffee. Um, that's before I eat. It's usually around 12 o'clock, something like that. Uh, I would, I, I grab, uh, I grab myself a coffee. I turn YouTube, the, the, the YouTube's on mm -hmm. and I just learn about either investing or movement or one of these things that really contribute to me as a person. I've been uh, dabbling with handstands lately. That's something I've been Are working on. Are you turning on. yourself into Ido Portal? And it's just like... Oh, man, I wish. He's yeah, he, just, he's amazing. He's so but, uh, yeah. you, brought up, you brought up Edinburgh. You brought up, um, what else? You, you brought up Kiss the Ground. Right. Uh, both very good documentaries that people should all check out. In fact, I'm, I'm on my Zone 2 training, which is just... Uh, bicycling for 30 to 45 minutes around 120 to 130 beats per minute. Yeah. Um, I'm watching a lot of documentaries and I found it a great way to just consume information. But um, other than those two, what sort of, what's been like your favorite documentary of the past couple of months? Ooh. Um, so the, the Dave Adenbra, I think is the, is the cream of the crop. Uh, it's it's the cream of the crop, but I think kiss the ground is more. Um, it it made me want to take more initiative. Mm -hmm. w with that said, they're both like watch them back to back, and it's so practical. Like you, you can learn what you can do um, in just like now to improve yourself. Yeah. Um, so I would really highly recommend watching back to back if you want to watch the the one about. Uh, Greenpeace, which is just it's just show you in a very visceral way uh, uh, in a very it, it shows you in a very lively way what's with the revolution that's been happening around the world uh, around mainly whaling but how how uh, people have been working to to save the planet and how you might be able to to feel inclined to help them so, yeah dope yeah. um now you're the one not asking me the question. So I'm going to jump on and say, you know, let's talk about documentaries. Uh, all right. So I did I, say I will ask you. So you did. Okay. Okay. I'll give you a go. I planted we'll, the we'll, seed. We'll, we'll I planted the seed. Inception, you win. Okay. Okay. Uh, so <laughs> on, on the documentary front, look, I, I think there's some classics like minimalism is interesting to me. I'm not oh, yeah. I'm a minimalist, so, but I think there's some some good takeaways there. I am. Yeah, I know. I got to watch it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right, well, I have watched the documentary. There's some good takeaways there. Oh, yeah. in terms of, frankly, when I look at things that don't necessarily matter that much to me, like fashion, 
you know, minimalist approach seems to work pretty well. Yeah. Um, and then let's see the other documentaries. There's this documentary called, I think it's called the business of drugs. And one of the reasons why I've been focused on this is because of um, two particular almost epidemic yeah, ec epidemics is the right word in the United States, uh, the opiate epidemic and the benzodiazepine uh, epidemic. And so people that are addicted to pain medications and, um, and anxiety medica medications. And there's also another uh, documentary about Kratom, which I found industry, and I'll link to this all in the show notes. But, um, you know, the business of drugs kind of outlines sort of how opiates trend goes into heroin. Uh, and so opiate use becomes too expensive, then people switch to heroin. And once you inject yourself, you're kind of done. And so looking at those as sort of very fundamental problems because people experience pain, right? And pain is a very, very real thing. And so how do you address those problems is are, are questions that I'm asking myself, right? Like, how do you address those problems? Are there alternatives out there? And I'm hoping that there's an opportunity certainly around that uh, to, to improve the conditions of certain people's lives. The other one, benzodiazepines, just because, you know, anxiety is something that I've experienced almost my entire life, um, not ever having used any of those benzos is something that I'm looking at too. And I think we can look to some common herbs that have been used in the past uh, for resolutions there. The other documentary that I recommend to people is a current one. Not that I think it taught me anything that I didn't already know, The Social Dilemma, but it was pretty important for me in terms of just outlining to the masses like, hey, what you see on Instagram and TikTok may not be representative of the entire person's life. And so people need to realize that what you see on Instagram is probably a very jaded view of somebody's life. And so uh, you see younger people who are, have developing brains that don't necessarily know this yet. And as a result, it can have effects on behavior, um, but also emotion. And so I would encourage people to check that out. It's a very well done documentary. Do I think I, I learned a ton in terms of the neuroscience aspect of it? Not necessarily, but do I think it helps bring some areas to the surface? And again, offers opportunities for people around how to make uh, solutions which are more convenient than the current one. So all of this, all of these problems that I've just outlined, whether it be pain, anxiety, or social media addiction, um, the resolution to me is going to be in finding something that's more convenient than all three of these that is cheaper and both better for people. So um, challenge thrown out to the vast ether that is listening to this podcast right now. What is the challenge? Outline it. Okay. So the challenge here is you have several epidemics and potential ones. Um, we know that social media can have a negative effect on people's moods. Part of it is what I just outlined that, you know, you're looking at your Instagram feed and everybody's life is perfect and you may be going through some shit. And what is the solution to social media addiction? And how do you create one that's convenient? So more convenient than social media is right now and actually serves to grow the health of the planet. Mm. That, that, that's a challenge. Uh, mm. The other ones are around opiate addiction and benzo addiction, which is something that's a little bit more complex, but if people are willing to talk about that, please just, just throw an email on my way. I want to talk about that stuff with people. All right. Boomer will talk to you about these things. So take him on it. Um, what did I want to, uh, there was something uh, that came up when you were, when you were talking about these, um, yeah, a lot of, a lot of time lapses on the beach uh, these days. Yeah. A lot of time lapses, people doing yoga, mm. going amazing lives. Um, Bahamas, hashtag, hashtag. <laughs> um, uh, You're going to move to Bermuda. Living the, living the Vida. Um, yeah. what, what other hashtags 
if you guys want to feel miserable, just go ahead and look at the time lapses. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Right. Um, and maybe there's, look, I, I've come to look at social media as a tool in terms of it, it helps me disseminate a message, but also allows me to collaborate with people. Uh, actually, you and I met through social media, right? So right. Uh, without social media. Tinder. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I thought we were on what was uh, the, uh, what's it, Bumble or something like that. Uh, yeah. All right, Roy, we got to wrap this thing up because I'm gonna have to hop on a call with potential podcast guests, which I am so excited to talk about later. But hell yeah. um, hell we're yeah. gonna wrap this up. What's your favorite book of the past three months? Um, I've actually read it for the first time. Super basic. The seven laws, uh, seven spiritual laws for success by Deepak Chopra. I think it's a very, very powerful book if you know what to take from it. Um, I've never looked at things the way I feel like the way that I look at things right now is really, uh, this book is really powerful for me right now. And this book talks a lot about current things that might go wrong in your world. Just like looking outside of your uh, um of your place you know it just uh, all these um all these i guess behaviors that we are engaged in right now as a species yeah. so i would really highly recommend that the four agreements is always amazing the power yeah. of uh, the mastery of the mastery of love is something i think that you boomer would love okay it's a book that i absolutely recommend and yeah, what's 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 a uh, few that you've been at? Okay, so uh, probably the top choice, just because it's something I read from every day, is called "The Art of Thinking Clearly," and it's just Ooh. essentially a a book of cognitive biases. And I tend to uh, read one a day, and it's just one or two pages on each bias, and it just allows me to check my thinking, especially when we're coming around election time and all this shit that people have just become so one-sided. It's nice to know um, what is influencing your thinking and how this right. tends to play out in your brain. The other one on the decision-making side of things is Thinking Fast and Slow by Daniel Kahneman. Uh, he mm. won the Nobel Prize, and I'm going through that right now. And I think those are the two that I would point out um, in terms of business books and an audio book that's worth listening to how to lead, which is an amalgamation of interviews by David Rubenstein, who's the chairman of Carlisle group, but he interviews people like Bill Gates, Bezos, and a few others. Um, and the audio book is the one you want to get just because it's live interviews. You get to hear how to lead, how to nice. lead. And okay. I mean, he even has like Ruth Bader Ginsburg in there too, which, you know, rest in peace. Fortunately, she went too soon, but it's, um, it's an, it's a very good book. All right, Roy, we got to sign off, man, because I got to go jump on this other one, but my friend, always a pleasure. The next time we do oh, yeah. this, you may be in the tropics and I'm going to have to come and visit you. Touch wood, touch wood. If, if DHL uh, delivers and, and gives me back the love that I give to it. Uh, if not, podcast, maybe then, we'll yeah. uh, we'll get some donations from FedEx after how many? Well, well, yeah. Yeah, we'll get we'll get somebody and 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 edit their voice as like a goblin or something like like as a, as a troll or something like that. Yeah, but exactly. yeah, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Everything will be cool. It's been a very, I've been very fortunate to learn a lot uh, in these past uh, weeks and. And learning from you, man. Always learning from you. You're one of my favorites. Uh, you, you too, brother. And you've got a podcast coming out. Tell people about it. Oh, uh, Grindful Podcast. Beautiful. To, to all the, the grinders out there, to all the people. We've got a few of those who... entrepreneurs that are listening, right? So, um... Right, right. So it's going to be, uh, it should be up in a few days. Uh, the first podcast is coming up. And I'm just going to be going through all these people and through people like Boomer. Boomer is going to be there as well. So like there's stories and the really depth of their mindset. So I'm going to try to decode these for you. Uh, yeah. And that's. I just remember talking to you, man. And, and whenever we do talk, we go pretty deep. So I'm looking forward to seeing what you produce in the world. <laughs> Bro, always right. a pleasure. Thank you for jamming. And um, catch up. Love soon. you, brother. Love you too.
Adios, amigos.